So over the past few days, I've been working really hard at reassembling the go-kart uh, based on the state that you guys saw it last in the last video. So just putting all the pieces back together. But the goal of this video today is to get this thing finally up and running once again. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another go-kart build video. Now, over the past few days, I've been working really hard at reassembling the go-kart here. The go-kart has changed quite a bit since you guys have seen it in the last video. Um, before, basically, it was a bare frame, and now most of the go-kart is reassembled. So very quickly, I will go over what I've assembled and put together. First being, I uh, reassembled and attached the seat. There's three struts that mount the seat to the frame in addition to two bolts that go through the bottom of the seat and into the frame. I put the steering wheel back on along with the steering column, the steering column cover or cowling, put that back on, put the two front suspension arms on, put the front spindles on, um, the whole steering linkage system. So now our steering once again moves. So that is nice to see. So that's all nice and hooked up and uh, torqued to spec. Put the pedal plate back on and then put the pedals back on. And I also redid the pedal return spring system with a little bit stiffer springs. Um, so moving backwards here, mounted the brake master cylinder there to the side. And then going back further, got the brake caliper mounted, got the brake rotor mounted to the axle and the axle was mounted to the whole frame through all four bearings. Uh, got these covers back on the rear suspension arms <clears throat> and then I put the uh, sprocket hub on the axle but haven't mounted the uh, sprocket yet just because I want to make sure it's aligned when I mount the engine. And then um, I think that pretty much does it. I got most of it uh, put together pretty quickly here. Uh, got the rear hubs on um, and also put the hubs on the peep more Corvette parts. So I put the hubs on the front uh, tires also. So today, the goal, and I didn't want to record all that because I know you guys have seen me take this thing apart and put it back together a million times, um, or maybe you haven't, but so this is just a quick summarized version. But I wanted to record the last few steps um, as I get closer to firing this thing back up since I plan on doing that today. Um, and what I really need to do today is a lot with the engine and the throttle uh, return spring or throttle linkage system and then the brake uh, lever return or actuator system, whatever you want to call it. This morning I made a trip to O'Reilly's to get a bunch of different parts. So to start, got some fresh motor oil, 10W30, and always the best, Mobile One. Um, <clears throat> not sponsor or anything. Hopefully one day maybe we'll get there. Uh, got a bunch of air filters or uh, little filters here. So this one is going to be for the valve cover vent right here because the one that came with it, it's kind of a little dinky. I don't know, it kind of looked funny to me. So I want to replace it with something that looked, you know, more sick. Got our Pet Boy special here. So that'll be going on to this little hose here. Um, and then got another one of those guys for the gas tank vent. If you flip this over, I don't want to flip it completely over because there's still a little bit of gas in here. But there's a barb right there that vents the tank. So I got another filter for that. A bunch of different hoses, so I got a bunch of different size fuel line hoses because I wasn't sure exactly what size I needed. Uh, so some of those will be used to attach those filters. And then the main thing was is I needed a fuel line to hook up to the new Makuni carb. Uh, the stock carb fuel line is much smaller, and I think this might be part of the reason why the Makuni performs a little bit better, is it does have a uh, larger fitting for fuel. So that'll be cool to see, so we'll get that hooked up, and then um, I was working on, there's a special fitting that goes into the bottom of the gas tank. It's a very interesting fitting. Uh, so it's got threads there. On one side it's a barb, a single barb, and on this side it looks like it's like a mini fuel filter almost. So that's interesting. Um, so I wanted to keep that as best I could. So it took a little while at the auto parts store to figure out the sizes I needed for everything. Um, so there's that. I'm trying to think if I miss anything. Oh, and then really the final thing. Um, Aside from hooking up the throttle linkage, putting the tires back on, and then I also got some tire slime. So one of the 
rear tires leaks uh, probably over a day or so it gets flat so I'm gonna try and squirt some of this in both rear tires and see if that kind of helps to seal up any leaks eventually the goal is I just need to get new a new set of tires for this thing um, I'm gonna actually probably get some wider tires for both the front and back um, but the last major step is uh, I got to redo the crankcase cover gasket because for some reason uh, the one that I got uh, from the Go Power Sports kit, it wasn't fitting very well. So what I plan on doing is, is the stock uh, gasket is on there, so I'm just going to clean that up, leave it on there, and then I'm going to RTV the rest of it to try and seal up any areas. Because it wasn't leaking a ton, it was just leaking a little bit, so I'm hoping the RTV will kind of just seal that up. Um, so yeah, that's the last step. Remount the gas tank, uh, mount the engine up, I'm gonna get a few little like nylon uh, washers to kind of make it nice and uh, it slide nice and easily across the plate when you adjust the spring or the chain, and then uh, basically hook up the torque converter completely to the engine, hook up the sprocket, and this thing should be good to go. So first order of business, so I can actually get this thing mounted to the go kart, is I'm going to. Um, do the crankcase cover gasket because that's going to be easier if I can just tilt the engine on the side to do it. So I'm going to take the torque, torque converter off, take the crankcase cover off, and then redo that gasket with the new gasket material, the RTV, and uh, seal that guy back up, and then we'll uh, mount the engine. I'd also give this guy a quick cleaning real quick. Got a lot of belt residue on there. So this one's still in pretty good shape. It's not like ripped or anything in any of the areas. It might just not have seated right when I put it back on. It started leaking when I like replaced the, uh, or when I removed the governor like two years ago and it was a very slow leak. But, so I figured between a combination of RTVing around there, putting this on, it should help to uh, seal any leaks that were present. And if it leaks again, then I'll just end up going with a new one. But didn't want to have to order a whole new one. Might throw just a quick bead around the top of this since we so we get it on both sides. Standard procedure here. I try to slide it down, get it nice and centered over the crankshaft. Try and get this right the first time. So we line up, give a firm squeeze. So I will hand tighten all the bolts and then I will go in and clean up all the extra RTV that has squeezed out around the edge of the crankcase cup. All right, so they say, uh, you know, with RTV, get it all hand, Oop, forgot one, forgot two. Um, They say to kind of do it by uh, hand tighten, so I'm gonna get just a standard spanner wrench and just do all these by hand in a star pattern. And then they say to let it cure for, I believe, like two hours. And then uh, you can go ahead and torque all the bolts to spec. They say to wait 24 hours to uh, before you fill it with fluids, but uh, I'm gonna push that 
time window a little bit because we've got to see this thing run. So we're kind of running into an interesting uh, dilemma almost with this new fuel line. Now, this fuel line that I got is definitely way bigger than the stock fuel line. And I mean, the fitting on the uh, Makuni carb is like a 5 uh fitting, so early like a fuel hose that uses a 5 16 ID. Um, and that's a pretty beefy fuel line. Now, it's got pretty thick wall thickness. Now, this is like full on SAE, you know, fuel line, so this could be used for you know actual cars not just little go-karts because if you look the the fuel line on the stock predator is pretty tiny um, the wall thickness is not very large so the thing i was running into was is like with the new mccuni carb you got your choke lever right here and so the thing that i wanted to make sure was that you know, because this is not a pump driven uh, fuel system, it's a gravity fed, I want to make sure there were no parts that were going uphill, like, you know, down from the tank up and then down into the carb. Um, so I think I got it figured out. I used a zip tie to zip tie the fuel line to the spark plug lead. Um, and this just goes right over the choke lever. So, you know, now that that is out of the way, I think that should be okay. And I got a hose clamp fitting on here, so that should hold that there. Uh, and then I just gotta trim this a little bit more to size so that it fits up with the barb on the bottom there. All right, so quick little update. Got all the filters on. Um, so you can see here, I routed the new fuel line just up and over this choke lever. So it does have a slight increase in height here, but I'm hoping that this is enough gravity like head pressure to still feed the carb um, in the long run. Um, it might, you know, get a little bit starved as the tank gets lower, but you know, that's something we can figure out in the future. I just didn't, you know, I mean, I guess I could have routed this fuel line down and around, but then it would make this really hard turn right into the, the fuel feeder uh, spigot or uh, barb fitting. So I think that'll do for now. Um, so I got the air filter on for the valve cover vent, and then I got the air filter on for the fuel tank vent. I don't know if this is necessary um, and or you know, how permanent this will be. I might try and make it look a little bit cleaner and more hidden. Um, so this, there's originally like a cover here and then there's an, a filter box that goes in here that I think was the stock setup. Um, can't find the cover so I might like 3D print something custom and then like have this be kind of hidden in there. So we'll see. That'll be something I tinker with uh, in the future here. Uh, but the next step, so the RTV has been curing for a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and torque all of the crankcase cover bolts to 17 foot-pounds. That's the spec for that. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just fill it with oil because uh, I think it's going to be okay. It does say to wait a full 24 hours, but eh, who listens to directions all the time? A quick like tech reminder if you're learning how to like wrench on things. Whenever you use a torque wrench, so this is just my uh, you know cheap affordable one from Harbor Freight. I do plan on investing in a nicer one at some point. <clears throat> but uh, whenever you're using a torque wrench, it's always best if you can to avoid using any kind of extensions or adapters because in those you do lose precision of your torque setting. Um, so if you can, if possible, just go socket right to the torque wrench, and that will be the most precise you can get. First, but I don't have the new bolts yet for the mounting. And that one. Alright, we are oops, torqued down. Alright, let's go ahead and fill the oil. Go ahead and get a funnel. So again, these Predator 212s take 10W30. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna fill from this plug here. Doesn't matter, either one. Whatever is most accessible. Oop, I need a smaller funnel. And for these engines, call out for a half quart, so it's pretty cool. One quart of oil will get you through two oil changes. So just keep that in mind. And then, you know, most oil quart jugs have their little reading on the side here. So you're going to just go to about the halfway mark. So 
So that's all there is to it. And then you just put this guy back. All right, so oil has been changed. Another thing too, real quick, uh, if your engine's been sitting a while, um, either with old oil or with no oil, like I didn't have any oil on this because I knew I was gonna have to redo this cover. Um, one good thing to do um, before you start the engine for the first time, similar to like kind of what you do if you're braking in a new engine in a car or you know if you've done major mods to a car, is you wanna, um, like in this case, you wanna crank the engine over since this can, we don't have a turnkey crank this is just a pull cord uh, you just want to kind of pull it a few times cycle the engine so it picks up the oil lubricates all the metal parts so this would be similar to like disconnecting your fuel injectors or whatever in your car and just cranking it so it pumps the oil throughout the engine Just a few pumps that should be good. All right, never used this stuff before, so let's give this a try. So it says to position the valve stem at six o'clock, shake vigorously for 15 seconds, turn can upside down, screw plastic nozzle clockwise onto tire valve, allow 30 seconds for can to discharge fully. Okay. Now, like I said, this just has a slow leak to it. Oh. That's interesting. I wonder if it's leaking at the valve stem. It actually like adds air to the tire. That's kind of interesting. Oop. So it must leak from the valve stem then. It must be where we get our leak from. At least there a little bit. There. I've always wanted to do like the bubble test where you spray water on here, bubbly or soapy water. And see where it leaks from. So this is pretty cool. Seems like a handy thing to like carry on a road trip. Hmm. So you just unscrew it and supposedly it's supposed to just be done. So I'll have to get one more of those for the, the other back tire leaks also a little bit, but that actually filled up the tire a little bit. That's pretty cool. Alrighty, just got back from Home Depot. Man, I don't know if any of you guys have gone to Home Depot uh, during this whole like stay at home stuff, but I feel like there's a company and an investment at the beginning of this. It was Home Depot because I've never seen it more packed uh, than now. And I guess since people are just stuck at home, they've got tons of time to do house projects. And I'm one of those people because as you know from the last video, I built a deck in the backyard. Um, but anyways, back to the go-kart. So got the torque converter mounted, got the engine mounted, I got grade eight and five uh, bolts for the engine mount, um, just to be, you know, I mean, it's a go-kart, but hey, it's cool because they look gold. Um, so I just tightened those down pretty good, but uh, probably have to like loosen them up to shift the engine back and forth to uh, tension the chain when we get to that point. Um, so I'm gonna kind of just torque these down uh, a little bit and then keep uh, assembling the torque converter uh, and we will slowly get there. Quick thing, if you guys are running a torque converter on your uh, go-kart here, there are, on these belts, these V-belts, there's actually a flat side. Let's see if I can show that. So that's the flat side, and then this side, on the right now, is the uh, slightly concave side. The, uh, I believe the flat side goes towards the engine. Because then the curve side will mate up to the uh, kind of the bell shape on the uh, pull, the drive pulley of the torque converter. Alrighty, so I got the torque converter on, and now that that's on, I'm actually thinking of 
think I'm gonna fire up the engine first before I go through and attach the uh, chain and everything because um, I'm gonna be running the go-kart while it's lifted up anyways before I put the tires on because I don't want it to zoom away um, but I'm gonna do that now and troubleshoot any uh, throttle stuff but we'll see what we what happens and we'll go from there So it looks good. I don't see any immediate signs of any leaks from the fuel line. It did tighten it down pretty good with some hose clamps, so just wanted to double check. All right, I think that's going to do it on the fuel. I don't need a ton. I just want to see how it starts. So this will be interesting. This will be the first fire up with the Makuni car. All right, first start with the new setup. Let's see how it goes. time or first try.
All right, so I'd say that's a pretty successful first start with the new engine setup for the go-kart. Now, um, there's a few things that I still have to figure out with this whole Makuni setup. Um, and, and, you know, you could probably see I was adjusting the idle screw a little bit. Um, the only other thing is it's leaking a tad of fuel just a little bit out the bottom of the bowl. So if anybody has any um, input on that in the time being that of when I record this and from when I upload it, uh, just let me know. I don't know what this adjustment screw is here. I don't know if this something if this has to do with something related to the fuel level uh, in the bowl. I don't know if the bowl is just overflowing right now. Um, I mean, it makes sense maybe that this would adjust something with the fuel input since it's right there. But uh, yeah, other than that, this thing runs great. Was uh, I th the torque converter was uh, engaging at idle, um, so uh, this thing had been sitting for a while. So what I did was I cleaned up the inside of the drive pulley uh, just a little bit because you're supposed to keep those clean. And I also kind of just lubricated the. Uh, there's a um, a brass bushing that goes over the drive pulley uh, shaft um, that the belt kind of slips over um, when it's not running and when the the drive pulley doesn't engage it. Um, and then I just tested it and I just grabbed a shirt real quick and because there's no resistance on the engine right now It's just you know spinning freely. There's not even a chain attached to the axle. It's just spinning um, by itself uh, So when there's some you know force behind it with the go-kart sitting on the ground with the weight I think it'll it'll be just fine, but it might be a little bit of playing around with the uh, idle screw, too So just one last time while I'm out here I just want to start it up just to show you guys kind of like the how it runs and it does just break up a little bit like if you just open the throttle like completely like you probably saw I was just pulling on the throttle cable with my hand if you just go wide open throttle right off the bat it kind of breaks up a little bit um, so that's another thing if you have any uh, advice on that but if you ease into it it performs beautifully so um, it's just going to take a little fine-tuning I mean in the end is a carburetor after all so though if there's two words that go together the, like the most it's tuning and carburetor so um, so yeah it's just going to take a little bit of fine tuning I guess we don't need the choke right now Thank <laughs> you. 
Alrighty guys, so that's gonna wrap up this video. I'm gonna leave it at here. I think we achieved some pretty big milestones today. Obviously, the big one being getting, getting the engine started for the first time in a long time, in months, um, since I got this new setup especially. So the other thing too is I wanna thank Go Power Sports. Um, they were the ones that sent me this whole kit um, to upgrade the engine. So they sent me the clear valve cover, the, the Makuni carb um, with the filter and everything. Um, and they sent me some really other awesome parts um, that, and they sent me all the sprockets too that I have yet to put on. So huge shout out to them. They're an awesome company out in Texas that provides a great range of different go-kart parts for all different budgets. Um, so definitely give them a check out. The link to their website is in the description. Um, they're pretty quick with online orders um, and they're an awesome little um, small business out there providing really cool go-kart parts. So the next video, I, um, I'll see what I'm gonna do off camera. I don't want to bore you guys too much with you know lame assembly stuff so I might get the side pods mounted and the front bumper mounted and do some stuff with the sprocket just because that's kind of nitty-gritty and it's not as exciting so I'm gonna try and make these videos more milestone videos instead of just doing every little step of the process so it's more exciting for you guys to watch but yeah this is the go-kart in its new form still have a few things left to do so we got to get the sprocket and the chain mounted got to get the bumpers on get the wheels on and uh, this thing will then be ready for its test drive. Um, and I have to figure out if I'm gonna do that here quickly in the neighborhood, which I probably won't film, or if I'm gonna take it out somewhere um, and borrow my buddy's truck and do that. Um, but yeah, it'll be fun either way. And another quick update before I go, um, this project, once I get it running, it's not over. It's just not gonna have as much of a precedent. Like I will be taking over more on this project, but this will be ongoing. Um, the next phase of this project is to really implement some cool 3D printed parts into the go-kart and also finish off the design and engineering kit for this so if um, I'm going to be putting a build packet together that's going to include all the drawings detailed descriptions of, of everything SolidWorks models 3d models of all the different parts um, and some uh, basic instructions on how to build this thing so it's going to be for sale I'm thinking somewhere around $75 like I mentioned in my past video and all that money will go to supporting this and my other future builds on the channel so exciting stuff for, for that to come as well so thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you guys are as psyched as I am about seeing this thing running again it's so cool um, it's been a long time coming but it's it's awesome to have this thing running again on the channel and I'm so excited to drive it with the new setup and just tear it up on the streets and whatnot so thank you all so much for watching if you have any comments or questions about the go-kart build leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them for you and other than that guys hit that subscribe button for more videos to come and I will see you guys in the next one.